Okay, now, uh, well, I just promised to you earlier that uh, we are going to look at these particular short stories, and now we're looking at uh, one of those particular short stories in the silent song and other stories, and that is Incident in the Park. And of course, this is a short analysis, and uh, before even we dive into it, I would uh, suggest that you read this particular text, and then all these things that I'm going to share with you, they'll be relevant. All right. Instant in the Park is uh, a short story done by Major Mwangi. You might have seen that. And uh, the focus is all about idleness in the city dwellers, especially those that who come from Nairobi. And if you wa- happen to be one who comes from Nairobi, then uh, you might find this one relevant or not. A summary of the incident. By the Kenyan author Major Mwangi, he paints a grim picture of a lofa-infested park with potentials air hanging forlornly over it. The story ends when an innocent food seller is stoned to death by a mob in a case of mistaken identity. Now, the short story opens with a gloomy description of the park. We meet some park loungers who waste hours on end sleeping in the park. Most of the idlers do not pay heed to the parliament and the city hall clocks and would rather loll all day doing nothing. At one, office workers come out of their offices in swarms. They are then swallowed by the sad city as they disperse in search of lunch. The idlers in the park nonchalantly watch the workers emerge from their offices, disappear into the city, and even anticipate the wave of workers to return enter eateries from various eateries and flood past the park back to their various offices. And I quote, the patched park was almost dead, alive only with a few idlers. Among the idle men sitting or lying under trees and shrubs is a fruit seller. He sits under shrub, taking stock of his cells. He mumbles and curses and lays on his back, covering his face with his bony hands. He lunches during lunch break. Maybe he's too poor to afford a meal. More idle men sit by a small lake watching a couple of men paddling hired boats. These loafers while away doing this every day. The park is poorly maintained. A pond in the park is choking with ugly weeds. And an idle man defies the order not to feed the hungry fish and deviantly throws rubbish into the water. Soon... He starts conversing with a fellow idler. They chat about how fish are like people. The largest fish in the pond bullies the smaller fish as they compete for food in their feeding ground. The man feeding the fish avs or avs that there is a great big fish that could drink all the water in the ocean and cause a great drought making the world to come to an end. Now, the huge monster supposedly eats other fish. In the park... We also meet two ice cream men who desperately try to sell their ice cream to no avail. Later, city constables confront the fruit seller about his license and identity card. He claims that he left them at home and tries to bribe them with five shillings and later ten shillings, but they would hear nothing of it. He desperately pleads with the man to let him go. He has a case with the judge. He calls a tyrant. He sells fruits to raise a fine for the case. He further offers the constables one basket of fruit and ten shillings. He even offers them both his fruit baskets, desperately desperately rather trying to buy his freedom. When they remain steadfast, he decides to run for it, but sadly he is accosted by the mob who mistake him for a thief and they stone him to death. They judge him based on his dirty, torn clothes and mean hungry face, the uniform of his trade. The police come to collect the body, but no one is willing to appear as the witness to recount the events leading to the poor man's ultimately demise in the hands of a callous, erratic mob. The two launches who were talking about fish witnessed the whole spectacle before drifting guiltily back to the park to continue lofting. The park is once again tranquil, just like a pond, moments after some splashes something into the water. Again, that's a tiny summary of that particular short story right there. It really makes sense if you've gone through it. Cheers for now.